Well, the funny thing is, and that's me clapping. I saw that. <laughs> uh, I saw it. Didn't, didn't make it. much of an impact. No. Um, the funny thing is, is like, though there's almost no one watching still. Yes. <laughs> you're like, that's not the funny thing. That's the sad thing. Um, the people I don't think it's sad. Who, the people who are watching seem to comment all the time. So it That's is bonus. the beginnings of, of some kind of a community. Actual engagement. Yeah. Right, like where you get the same names or are commenting often. And I even see some of the people who watch this podcast comment on your guys' stuff. Mm -hmm. Like I've, I've seen one today, that Andrew no Switzer or whatever. Really? He's, huh. uh, he's been a longtime follower of my page on Instagram. Yeah. So he's watched the podcast and then he followed both of you two. Yeah. Huh. So like cool. when you start getting that kind of stuff, it's like, even if it's not much, like that's how you build grassroots, yeah, community. right? Huh. 100%. Meanwhile, like so. we don't we don't put our Instagram on this podcast at all. No, I know they've gone yeah. and found they found huh. you on their own. That's extra cool, right? Yeah. That means well, it's like they spend, haven't just like stumbled into it; they've done the actual work to find well, it. When you mm -hmm. spend like hours a week with the same yeah, show, fair. you get a level of investment you don't get by double tapping a picture, right? Yeah, and then it's like more genuine intrigue in the characters per se. <laughs> My characters weird <laughs> yeah your character is a little inconsistent right now on instagram what do you mean it's it's gonna be i have a feeling that'll pick up soon yeah hopefully yeah i'm slowly getting more people so yeah it's just hard because like i don't do anything in one or i haven't really done anything in one session because i'm oh, yeah. still very slow so it's it's hard to get anything done the old, and then posted. Uh, six hour tattoo this size kind of thing no they're all bigger now for the, for the most part <laughs> But it's <laughs> they're all just, bigger, or most of them are anyway. Yeah. It's just like I, I'm such a little detail freak that probably doesn't matter. It'll probably go away when it's healed. But um, I just focus on things that probably don't matter. Yeah, and yeah. It takes me a get while. Get lost in the minutia almost, yeah. where it's like, do I need to do more? I should do more. That little spot needs to be touched again. I think yeah. that's why so many of the super high end black and gray guys are going opaque grays, mm -hmm. so they can spend that time and make those details last a long time. Because sure, sure in black and gray, if you're putting in those those black washes, yeah, over time those details are gonna chill the fuck out and not matter as much. Yeah. But if mm -hmm. you're properly saturating those mid-tone opaque grays, yeah, you have a chance of those details lasting, you know, three, four, five years, mm -hmm. keeping those small little details you spent that time on. Well, that's the thing, like when you're saturating black, you, you're just looking at it going like, this'll, this'll be there. Oh yeah, yeah. The black's you know I mean? gonna stay. That's one mm -hmm. of those. That's one of the things that really opaque appeals to me about the opaque thing. Yeah. Because it's just like, okay, well, I can saturate it to a place that I feel like it's gonna really hold. Yeah. And I don't want to just do some like light, fluffy stuff that's gonna go away. Mm -hmm. like, I want gray it to be, wash kind of thing. Yeah. I want when it to I be was, there. Sarah and I watched all of Ink Master because we love any kind of <laughs> tattoo show we can get. <laughs> Naturally. Generally. Um, Fair. But I feel like, like you a, should be the judge. A lot. I would yes. love to do that. You'd be you a could. Great I think judge I'd be better than Navarro. Yeah, yeah, I would say so. Yeah, <laughs> I've got way more experience than him. Hear that, Navarro? Yeah. You've been called out. Yeah. Yeah. This is me screaming at Dave Navarro <laughs> <laughs> from my Rinky Dinky YouTube page. Yeah. Um, anyway, Call shots fired. Yep. Um, I, a lot of the time, they would hate on people if they used opaque gray. Yeah. I think it was really? like a sin. I didn't really understand it, but I was like, maybe it's like a cop out to some people. Like not at all. No, I'm not saying it Man, is. I, yeah, I, I just I, think I'm it was saying, not understood. Like, I think if you don't, if you're not a tattoo artist, you might see it as a cop out. No, this is like, um, like some tattooers would bash other guys that did yeah, it on yeah. the show. You know how they have like the house politics? Mm -hmm. They're like, mm -hmm. you're saturating a black and gray tattoo. You're using opaque gray. What the fuck is wrong with you? Yeah. Like that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Because like you should be able to do a natural gradient with your black wash and your gray wash, and and you course, should be able to. Of course, sure. I'm not. I'm not speculating. I'm just telling yeah. you. I'm like parroting. Meanwhile, crap done that I properly, they should both heal very similar. Yeah. Well, and the I've opaque grays, I... the opaque gray done properly, should have a longer lifespan for the small details. Yeah. The the black and gray normal typical wash, in large shapes in those sharp contrast areas, should stay just fine. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to those small details, when it comes to holding a light mid tone, mm -hmm. well, the opaque grays done properly should win every time well i always think like there's a lot of weird elitism that i don't quite understand because mm. there's a lot of hate for white ink too sometimes yeah where it's like yeah why you you couldn't figure out how to make that bright without using white are you even an artist like that kind of thing it's like 
Uh, I mean, how about in, just make a good tattoo? In is principle, that so hard? In principle, like if you don't have the ability to capture good contrast, that's a problem. Sure. But and some people do lean on white to try and create things where they, they didn't leave enough light wrong. negative space. Yeah. I think it's partially an issue of a typical artist, a tattoo artist, whomever, spends lots of time stuck in their own head, yeah. trying to work on a lot of technical details. We have an artist here in town who will kind of troll on, on some of our beginner artists. He's even like approached me a couple times and... Oh, now I'm curious. And try and try to explain <laughs> yeah. that I should be generating my own references, like my own realism references, by drawing them in pencil from my imagination. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Which is openly absurd on a on a on a timeline. Let me draw something real from my yes. imagination. Let me draw a yeah. real bear, real mountains, yeah. real human woman, real hair, and then also these four other things. Also, I need to be good at drawing. Every, let me posit that if you want to draw a bear from your imagination, maybe you shouldn't be doing realism. Maybe you should be doing that's another the style. Trick. It's you're not going to get it <laughs> exactly this right. This yeah. individual is trying to express traditional or neo-traditional or illustrative uh, tattooing concepts. Yeah, to, to an realism. industry that has already accepted that you use real mm -hmm. images, real yeah. photographs to tattoo realism. Because if you're trying to sit there and shade this in and create texture with a pencil, from your imagination, A, it's gonna take 36 hours to generate this image. Yeah. yeah. And, it, and the client's gonna come in and it's not gonna fit them right anyway. And now you're screwed. And now you're super yeah, screwed. now you're screwed. <laughs> yeah. Because you can't just go find another bear. No, because yes, you, you just drew you, this one. You spent 33 <laughs> well, hours drawing this okay. bear. Let's just draw another one. I'll okay, just, well, that'll be an hour? No, no, that'll be a week. <laughs> I'll see you on Wednesday. <laughs> I'll see you next time. Who does that? I don't think but I've it, ever there, seen anybody draw he, realism. He's not like a, that. Not a high-end artist. He's given me an ex No, certainly not. He's well, how much are you paying him just to draw this thing? At he's that given point? me an example or two. Yeah. And now, you know a couple of artists. Uh, you've shown me a couple that... You know they'll they'll sharp that they're that good with a couple of subjects yeah, of course. that they will sharpie those couple of subjects on and, and, and they can that's tattoo right realism for some things that's right it's right for some things but that artist has become super fluent in those couple of subjects yeah you know they yeah. can draw they can on butter their bread that on woman's things. face and these several this array of roses this array mm. of rose lighting this array of rose petals. Uh, over and over again, consistently, yeah. and do it in high detail, in high contrast, well, memory, do it properly. Right? That's muscle memory, and and like that's technical skill. They mm -hmm. do a little technical skill in these things. That doesn't mean they can also draw an owl, a bear, a detailed yeah. evergreen tree, a, well, a ninety-six it's Mustang. It's as easy as this. Uh, if I've tattooed one hundred and fifty roses in a row, one hundred and fifty-one. Not much different than 150. That's right. All of a sudden, Kevin wants me to tattoo a freehand uh, sharpied on octopus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's not yeah. a fucking rose, man. No. And that's a different ball game now. That's right. Because I've been doing roses, not octopus. Mm -hmm. But the thing I will say is, like most of those guys that do that, it's stylized. Yeah. It's yeah. it's not what I would consider to be realism. No. Mm -hmm. Like even when you get into like the idea of like hyper realism and stuff like that, you're you're starting with a reference and then you're taking it up to wherever you think it should be. But, like, for the most part, those guys that are drawing it on, it's all a style. It's not oh, realism. Yeah. Mm. And, and the example he gave me was an, was an individual he's worked with before who is kind of like 60-40. 60% of the time, he's doing exactly what we're doing, yeah. which is composing photographs and images into a tattoo composition and yeah. tattooing them, as is yeah. generally accepted in the black and gray industry. Yeah. But then... 40% of the time, he's actually sitting down and he's he's learned to draw um, a couple of styles of Chicano woman's face. Mm -hmm. Because again, that's a bit simpler than just trying to draw uh, a portrait from normal because you can start with a few hard shapes yeah. if you're drawing a Chicano girl, right? Well, even so, just drawing a generalized face, like that's, that's doable. It's doable. But it's, if you're trying to recreate but, someone's grandmother... Yeah, that's not the same. <laughs> Let me draw my imagination. Of I've your seen your grandma. Yeah, I yeah. saw her. I'll remember. I will uh, make her the best I can. Yeah. No, no, make my grandmother. God damn it! But that's what I mean. I like, want my grandmama. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just because you do it in black and gray, yeah, doesn't make it realism. Doesn't make it portraiture. Doesn't make it any of that stuff. Yeah. Like it's it, are, what are you aiming at? 
because Chicano, like that's a style. It's a style, you know exactly. I mean? it, and that's what I mean. It's like stylized. You can technically and black and gray. do a form of black and gray traditional. Yeah, of course you, know you can. You know what I mean? So black and gray is just you know the art form, and that it's you the use. ink palette. Yeah. So, so I'm not even saying it's impossible, but this individual has spent too much time in his head and is trying to apply high art mm-hmm. to our industry, which is accepted and does have a certain <clears throat> method of operation, mm-hmm. right? And applying those principles here doesn't actually make any sense. But he spent so much time in his head, he's here trying to possibly out of some sort of jealousy or something, pushing at us, mm. trying to like encourage. Well, he'll just move the goalposts because if you started doing that, then he'd be in here barking about something else. That's what You're we're saying. You're not going to win here. that game. I you can't appease it, that mentality. Well, he, he's in the whole industry because like that—that yeah. that means that David Vega is a trash artist. This is like, exactly my which point. he's well, not. He's absolutely incredible. Like, yeah. For some people, everything but what they're doing is garbage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. like it's like no, okay, that's oh, that's not a tattoo. Oh, that's, that's not, not how I do blah, it. Blah, blah, but there's no this, artistry. This gets into the psychology of art, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you spend long enough, dug super deep doing what you do, and sticking to your personal set of morals to do what you do. You see other people, you know, breaking your rules or challenging your concepts. You're not looking at your you're not looking at your feelings on the subject going, "Oh, maybe this is a a me problem or an ego problem." You're going, "Oh, this is this is their problem. They're they're fucking up." Mhm. Mm-hmm. Well, what time are we at? I have no idea. Okay, psychedelics. Psy- oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Because I don't think you did it last time. I didn't. Right? And well, Sarah was here. I didn't want to be like, hey. Well, <laughs> I mean, she's got nothing on that. Like, yeah. I don't have as much on that, but, like, she has nothing on that. So oh, it's man. not a topic that she can When we finally do worry, a we'll mushroom podcast, we're yeah. going to bring her in. She'll trip to for her first time she's on straight video. Edge, so I would imagine that would be a tough one, which we'll, I want to get we'll off on We'll just drug her point. tea, it'll be fine. Because, like, I have always been a fairly sober-minded person, mm-hmm. but I would never commit to straight edge, ever. And this I, was, like, a huge thing wh- for us. Why has she committed together. to straight edge? I, I think it was, like, I'm not going to, like, run her through the mud, but I think she, like, the people she was friends with. Yeah. Like, and she listened to a lot of hardcore music, and mm-hmm. straight edge and hardcore go pretty hand-in-hand. Oh, hand. yeah. And it became, like, I, I mean, I'm because she's going to watch this, she's going to be like, that's not exactly it, Remy. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, I think it's just it was a status thing, and also yeah. like it was it was good for her to have something to like feel strong about too. Yeah, totally. And she's just owned it. She hasn't had a liquor at all since two thousand eight. Wow. Uh, she's never done any drugs. She's just really clean living. I work. mean, I've got a lot of respect for anyone who's got the. And I'm, this isn't about intoxicating substances. It's about anything in general. Someone who's yeah. got the willpower to make a decision. And, and, and then just it. stick to it. Just well, just walk that road. I am uh, I'm a lot like that. But yeah. I don't want to take hard lines like that mm-hmm. because I I feel like it's limiting. Well, I've got hard lines in lots of places in my life. Oh, me too. But certainly not there. Not there. Well, like for <laughs> example, her last boyfriend was also straight edge. Yeah. And so when she brought him to meet her family, her dad drinks. Mm-hmm. Every now, and, well, not every now and then. He drinks every day. Yeah, but he's not a drunk. He's a high functioning, semi alcoholic type yep. guy. Mm-hmm. Um, you'd never know he had a problem, but he has three or four beer every single day, kind right. of thing. Mm-hmm. Right. Anyway, he offered me a beer, and I accepted it and drank it with him. And it was like a bonding moment for him because he was like, "Right, well, she's never brought she never got that even once with her last. Yeah, and with huh. anyone that she's been with in years. Fair. So Fair. it was like. I've now won points with it. So, like, there's some <laughs> there's some good reasons to not take things off. The table. Yeah, and there's and also for, for you personally, wanted, there's no reason not to have that beer and get that. Oh, and I don't level mind. up from this. I think I already hot, had a beer. I already had I a beer today. I think a cold beer on a hot day is is a real vibe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now I don't know about hard liquor. Like I'm not a big hard liquor. I drink guy. a lot more oh, whiskey dude. than beer. I can't do it. It just it kills me when you get into I can, whiskey obviously but when you get into whiskey like the way you feel about w- like a cold beer on a hot day yeah whiskey in the evening by a fire or something oh, man there's nothing better so that's a really good vibe our crew like the, the people i normally like camp and spend a lot of time with the the jameson bottles just get empty yeah, yeah. like 
you, you just put a Jameson bottle, you, you put it next to your chair, and you pull a sip out, and you pass it around, and by the end of the night, that 40, that 60 is gone. Mm. But see, like, I'm weird. I like one. Fair. Like, I really enjoy it. I'm like, a, it's like a sipping thing for me. Mm. I've never been like, oh, yeah, let's have six of these. It's always like <laughs> one or two. I think let's have six of these is less about flavor and more about what's wrong with you. Yeah, right? that's Like, fair. there's something going on you're trying to True. get away from. True. Well, or but, you're but trying to enjoy the experience of whatever it is. Because, like, I'll, too I'll many people... We do this in different ways, though, right? Like, I'm not saying yeah. specifically liquor. Yeah, no, I'm I'm with you there. Six of anything feels like a lot. <laughs> yeah, I do it with tattoos. Yeah, uh, six, six rice six tattoos yeah. today, please. Yeah, six bowls of rice though. Uh, yes, six, six million six rice. bags of six rice. Six bags of rice. You got a problem? You might have a rice problem. <laughs> yeah, but I, like I do think sometimes we're we're a little bit too focused on the idea of supplementing our reality. Yeah, and yeah. more, more enjoying. Well, okay, that's that's the negative, but. A substance can be enjoyed for what the substance is. Sure. It doesn't have to be because you hate whatever mm. you're the, in. The, this is how I explain my marijuana use. How I'd rather have use. mushrooms used as like, oh, I did this to, to get this effect. Yeah. Well, that's, that's to improve my to mm -hmm. improve my normal, not escape my normal. Yeah, exactly. That's what I. That's what I mean. Like I think culturally, like so, say France. France wine France. it's a part of the culture sure and it's about enjoying the wine and the experience of everything that comes it's with it it's paired with a meal it's meant to enhance your life social experience it's yeah. meant for a lot of positive things and I think like if you have a life enhancement or an experience enhancement that kind of thing that's one way of looking at it and I think too often we lean on the idea that we're trying to use we things to the, escape. We go to the route more like um, the drunken Irishman. Yeah. Where yeah. He well, can it's barely just like, stand up. He's fighting everyone. You do that with he's food. Drooling. You could pop open a bag of chips and eat yeah. an entire bag of chips and you sure. don't really taste it. Or you could savor it and enjoy it and have and, and like have it spend time on your palate. You know, like I gotta that's, tell you, I don't remember the last things. time I like enjoyed a chip. No, you never. Like, <laughs> like, like, yeah, no one does, but it could be done. Yeah. But like, you it was, just it go was like just this. easier than making real food. Well, I don't remember no, the last like, time that I've like open a bag chewed of chips. chips and then not been immediately reaching for another exactly. one. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You never like, ooh, that's a really good chip. Ooh, yeah. I want to feel the flavors on my tongue. Like, but no, if it's like not say, a tasting. say someone when you You're were mowing down. <laughs> say when you were a kid. Yeah. What if they could teach you to slow it down and focus on it? I think like you I feel like I never got thinner that. people overall yeah, for because, sure. Um, what happens when you eat slower is you're digesting as you're eating rather than um, eating too fast to even notice how full you're getting. Yeah. Hmm. Um, so they say even chewing slower, yeah. taking smaller bites, you'll end up eating less because a lot of the time what we want when we're eating isn't even to be full. It's just the flavor on our tongue for mm. some amount of time, right? Hmm. So like I did this trip where I used to eat a large pizza and a sitting when I was young just on my cheat day. Like it was like my... I'm gonna sit down and eat a whole pizza, and because I've worked all week, and I'm gonna yeah, right now. I'm gonna have my show. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like whatever you're gonna HBO, put on the stories. Whatever the hell show it is you're invested in at that time, and you're just like, you got your pizza there. Got your days you, of your lives. You want to mow down for an hour. <laughs> well, instead of eating eight slices of pizza in 20 minutes, if you slow it down and eat four slices of pizza in 30 minutes, you might even feel fuller at the end of it. Oh, I think you guaranteed will. And you'll have that flavor with you as long, too. Mm -hmm. So, it's a my turn to walk in with uh -oh. the other end of the spectrum. Yeah, come on, skinny guy. Yeah, you I can't eat enough. I am intentionally trying to speed up how I eat to fight mm. the exact same mechanism. Yeah. Because by, by nature, I'm a slow eater. I naturally just end up chewing my food really well, and it takes me forever to eat I'm not Enough hearing guy. the problem. Yeah, this <laughs> yeah. fucking guy, man. So it's completely backwards. So Everything like, you're saying that's hard is easy. Yeah, yeah. No, it's Let the opposite. Let me tell you, you guys it's are nuts. Yeah. It's hard the other way. It's hard as in... <laughs> this is my I truth. Need, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Speak your truth, Scott. <laughs> I, need, I need to work tell hard. Tell me how easy this is to, for you. <laughs> to eat faster so that I don't get full too soon. Yeah, that's, that's tough, man. <laughs> you got a real problem. Yeah, I feel sorry for you. <laughs> mm. <laughs> We were talking about France just a minute ago. Yeah, And this France. is a great segue because... Um, segue was invented in France? We talked about... I don't think so. I don't think that's sure what... Wasn't. That's <laughs> what no, certainly not where I was going. Maybe. No. Um, we talked about inspired tattoo portraits mm -hmm. on blastover tattoos. Yep. Um, reacts to blastover tattoos, mm -hmm. right? 
And somebody watched that video randomly the other day because it's still getting a little bit of view here and there. Sweet. And uh, it's first time commenter. They're like, uh, so and so, Celine, I think her name is, isn't a blast over project. Um, and then linked me this article where it's like a. That's all one project? It's all. Well, there's a couple tattoos that were there first. Got it. But then. Uh, she started this page called Inspired Tattoo Portraits, which is still her page now. Yeah. I have no idea the origin of this, but apparently many years ago, as far back as like 2013, 2014, she already had quite a few tattoos, but she was interested in interviewing and portraiting um, other people with bodysuits hmm. and hearing their stories about why they did it and what they learned doing it and all these things. So it started out as just like a series of portraits of heavily tattooed people but as she um ended up surpassing them she just carried it on herself like hmm. doing her own images that's super cool um she explains that she had this vision with this guy named guy de tattooer or la tattooer or something he's a france french tattooer guy le tattooer when i seen his page i was like how have i never seen this guy's page before he yep. just must not trend but it's amazing work no oh, it's probably all in french her bodysuit was <laughs> organically laid the out to have french. what four or five layers yeah so when when she went and met with him because she specifically chose him for this project because mm -hmm. I guess all of his work told her it was the right person to go with. Well, yeah, she nailed it. She uh, she had uh, like a couple hours long um, consultation with this guy where they designed, decided and designed a organic multi-layer bodysuit project. So cool. That would be upwards of 30 sessions. At the time of this interview, she had 21 sessions that were probably day long. Yeah. Oh, and, easily. And yeah. uh, she had 10 more planned then. This is 2016. So can you wow. explain a little further a 30 session bodysuit multi layer? Multi layer. So did you mean that she, the multi layer was going to be, they're doing one bodysuit on top of her previous layers? Basically, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. She's got uh, overlaying tattoos. For a second, I thought you were planning on that they were. Starting with fresh skin and planning. Well, we're going to first do a sleeve like this, and then a sleeve like this, and then a sleeve like this. Kind of. Sort really? of like that, yeah. yeah. It, would, it was designed Stylized. to have... Um, of the background would be made up of the previous layer. Mm -hmm. So, like, whereas you would do shading to create the background in a tattoo, yeah. this new tattoo that was placed over top would have a background this has this has some first. color realism in the background oh, there's a script sleeve on top every and then a kind of tattooing sleeve. you yeah, can name it's everything <laughs> and it's done impeccably <laughs> yeah black on black white on black color on black black and gray uh traditional portraits mm -hmm. like there's every kind of tattoo stuff and this guy has done all of it this guy is like a like some kind of a crazy artist like mm -hmm. i only Literally. found one picture of him mm -hmm. but he looks like like a body mod hippie mm -hmm. like he, but he doesn't have any like crazy piercings he's just got like a full body suit from neck down yeah but like it's multi-layered himself Shh. and he's got like dreadlocks or whatever and like he looks like he's probably late 50s early 60s and I, I can't find any real information that i can make sense of on him though because like it's, it's all awesome. in french for the most part that's more of a mystery <laughs> right <laughs> right and it just made me like when i was looking at his page all the stuff that he's done i was like Man, the stuff we're doing in North America that we know of is nothing. Yeah. We're not doing we're not we're not even close. We're not the tip of the sphere. And I'm not sphere. saying what we're doing sucks sphere. either. I'm just <laughs> saying like, sphere. Tip of the sphere. like there's people that are taking this art to a whole other fucking level. Yeah. And here I am, like I got some roses on my neck. <laughs> He's doing whole body suits with like multiple layers yeah. all the time. Like all he posts is guys and girls he's working on that have multiple layer body suits. I would find it hard <laughs> putting enough time to plan a sleeve well, knowing that I'm but I'm gonna put well, a whole other sleeve on top it? of it later. Where's the audience for it? How do you even get to that level here? Yeah. Well, and not yeah. not saying, oh, you're not doing great work, but how do you get your mind to that point where you're like, I'm doing multi layer body suits. Well that's where it's gonna go with our <laughs> even our opaque gray, you know, black and gray realism, ultra realism conversation from a few minutes ago. Yeah. That's where it's gonna go with that as well, is that's all well and good if you're 
in New York. Sure. Or San Francisco. Yeah, how do you do in that a larger in center? In a, in a town well, like this, in a town like this, you can't really tap into that ultra high-end market or that ultra specialized market. We're just not going there. No, we're not going to go there. In a town like this, you're better off well, getting efficient. I would I would push back on that a little bit. A bit. Because there's some guys that like, you know, when you get to a certain caliber of artwork and exposure, it doesn't matter where you're placed. Like, no. there's that dude in um, in New Zealand that's got a little farm that he mm-hmm. has three tiny houses on. Yeah. And that's his studio. Well, someday that's my fucking plan, buddy. Yeah. But you, you fly in, you stay there, you're with yep. him for a few days, you pay ten, fifteen thousand mm-hmm. dollars $15,000, and you leave with something yeah, that's, dope. That's yeah. what I kept wondering was, like, what are this guy's rates like? Oh, it's a lot. <laughs> like five, five, you... five grand a day, probably. Because, yeah. like, she talks about him and their unique relationship, yeah. whatever the hell that means. Hmm. It's an honorable, like, almost like father-daughter, but not hmm. sort of relationship that they've got hmm. now. This it's, is, it's France. Who this knows? is 2016. <laughs> she, so this is five years ago. Crazy. And I found out how old she is too. She's like thirty six or something. Wow. She is a little. She just looks young. Yeah. But it's, they're in better shape than we are over there. I think. Yes. <laughs> but anyway. Well, even um, just the like when I heard about how Parisian bakers have to like your your shit spoils in twenty four hours. Yeah. <laughs> like I was like, oh okay. Yeah. Hi. That's why they're healthy. Yeah. yeah they they're eat not real eating things. The preservatives. And yeah. Shit. Exactly. But, like all I could think was like, like, what a. Like, how do you meet with this guy? And, like, this the whole arrangement would be different than what we do here. Yeah. Oh, because my goodness, it sounded yeah. like they had this, like, soulful connection. <laughs> well, Whereas think about you this. go to a tattoo shop around here, it's like, yeah, we'll slap it on you. Think <laughs> about this. That guy probably <laughs> understands that he's going to have to spend two or three years with this person. Yeah. yeah. Like, she just, was talking about him, how I would imagine you would talk about a shaman. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like, that's like how you would have done, right? Like, yeah. when, like when you were a Japanese traditional bodysuit, you'd go to the tattooer, you'd talk about your life, and they would tattoo you. Yeah. Like, or or um, Polynesian and things like that. Like any, oh, any yeah, any of the like the passed down tradition things. It's it's less about getting a tattoo and it's more about walking with that person. Yeah. Which I I think like this is a good example of you're you're in a project to take on something very extreme and you need to be you need to be able to understand that you're committing to this person for years yeah like this this guy has a huge commitment to multiple people i would want to sit down with someone for a few hours and make sure that i can stand them (laughs) yeah what's this gonna be like you know what i mean like when you're doing we still have that problem on a small scale here Mm -hmm. where oh i'm gonna be tattooing this person i've already committed to this turns out they're kind of shit yeah I'm just gonna. <laughs> ugh, this is gonna be a shitty day. Now imagine doing that with them for three years. Well, yeah. that's the thing is that that seriously full impacts days. full days. That seriously impacts how you how you enjoy your day. Yeah, I I had kinda, and the level of work you can do. I had one of those on Monday where I, I I'm finishing a project for a different artist. It's not a project that was started well. It's not a project that uh, there's a clear path forward on. Uh-oh. It's 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 not. It's a not, no no arm. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a no-no back. A yeah. no-no back. Ooh. It's 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 not no-no, but it's not gonna it's not gonna be a great work of art. It's not gonna be something I, I'll ever post. It and she's kind of like <clears throat> she's on the verge, like she's far enough right that she's on the verge of some really toxic crap, and you're like, ooh, ah, yeah, yeah, those more, when you those find are some wild opinions. Politically misaligned with someone that you have to work with a lot. Yeah, it yeah. must be like. Wow, it is like I challenged her, her values, and she took it surprisingly well. I also think personally <clears throat> that we should we should care a lot less about all that stuff. That's my thing. This well, is what I was when, telling. When like, I find myself in that situation now, I find myself, and I even explain this to her. Whereas, like, I'm I'm preaching this to myself. I explain mm-hmm. to her, but we all need to take ourselves a little bit less seriously. Yeah, and understand that everyone has opinions, and we all feel strongly about them. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So, and I, I kind of explain this pretty early on in our session, where hey, even if I, we might butt heads in some topics here, like. I'm on my own personal journey, trying to take myself a little less seriously, but I still f- feel super strong about lots of subjects. Well, everybody's amped up these days. Yeah, of course. So, like, I lots of people are going away from Facebook None of us are free of it, reason. man. Like, they're leaving Facebook because they're tired of being polarized. Yeah. Good. Because it's the only place that's happening to them. 
Well, I've I've stopped list watching news, and the only podcast I listen to. Oh are man, here. so is everyone else. And yeah. I <laughs> and I'm get ready for that to collapse. Social yeah. media or social media has taken over, but without Trump there mainstream media's views have gone in the toilet no of course <laughs> like i all i'm seeing why is, do you think the the megan markle thing is out oh now? man it's bad. everybody's loving and that and i knew it would be bad but like i didn't i didn't think it would take it would be this fast mm-hmm. it's gone like this <laughs> oh well, the funny thing is, is they profiteered off of him oh yeah and then killed him yeah yeah not literally but, and they're still beating him. Like he's well, yeah. on the ground, and they're beating him with a horse now. But to be fair, he's trying to, to rally the. No, I I get that. I'm not saying he doesn't saber rattle or whatever you want to call it. But like they they're still beating a dead horse to see what life they can get out of it. Yeah, because well, yeah. they run a Trump story, it's going to get more views than anything else. Man, they I'll run. say it. Like when I because I used to get into like all these types of things. I've yeah. deleted all of that. Yeah, I used yeah, to be I've so interested in it, and I was like, eh, I could care less now. Mm-hmm. But uh, I find that I always ramp down after the election season. Yeah. And then I get ramped back up into it. Yeah. I'm sure that's just a way that it works. But Well, um, we're coming close to my prediction, which was Kamala's in by April. So we'll see if that happens. Well, I, di- I didn't think Biden would get in, but I, like, I thought she was going to get in. It was yeah. either going to be her or Trump was my original prediction. I didn't think they'd let him get in there. He's just too old, and not old <laughs> age-wise, just mentally, he's too old. Yeah. Because you can be his age and be sharp as a whip, like my stepdad's mom. Mm-hmm. She is, like, 92 and quick as a whip, mm-hmm. and she's just upset because she can't travel and see all her kids but, and stuff because of COVID. But, but meanwhile, he's from the 60s. <laughs> like, he's he's from a different time. Yeah. Geopolitically, a very different he's time. He's a relic. Yeah, he's a bloody relic. He's, he's a, a relic. time capsule. You put him away and like, well, this is what we were like once. Remember yeah. when we were like this? Yeah. <laughs> I, he wears his age. Oh, yeah. so much. Like he can't transition into the current day. Well, but he doesn't know what day it is. So. Yeah, like when he was trying to tell people to look up his website, but he lift, listed his phone number or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yes. Oh my, oh my God. God. So awesome. Joe, and, and the fact that he got oh, oh. he got confused, he thought he was running for Senate, yeah, which was in '84. Yeah, like we got some there's some there's some interesting things going on there. That guy that guy's got the nuclear football. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I was like, telling my it's like that. Meanwhile, my, most of my his day is one, two, three, four, five, six. I have a coworker who's um, dating a girl who's 13 years younger than him. Ah, uh-huh. and. Uh, they were doing the lusty thing for the first few months, and I was mocking him openly about how I hate this stage of a relationship when everyone looks better than they actually are. And I, I really do. I hate it. And I was getting sick of it myself when I was dating. I was like, yeah, yeah, I get it. I'm perfect. You're perfect. Can I hate that we, I see you in a positive let's light. Let's get to the point where we can acknowledge each other's flaws. Let's and, stamp out these rose-colored glasses and, and move a, on. And take a dump in front of one another and, like, remark on the size of it and things like that. Like, that's the cozy Real comfort. relationship shit. <laughs> right. Exactly. Emphasis on shit. Where you yeah. get into an argument about what you're going to have for dinner tomorrow. Like, that. That's what I'm looking for, right? Because I got sick of the lusty phase where everyone's glossing over each other's flaws. Because that's not real. You have well, of to like. Not. But anyway, well, my it is. It's a chemical. Yeah, too much. You don't know, you know what real is though. I woke up this morning, pissed off with some mortgage shit. Read a text from 1:30 last night trying to get the the seller of this house to sign a document, and he's not available until exactly when I'm not available. Sure. That kind of bullshit. Sounds right. And then Rowan was just like, I've got a work from home day. Just let me deal with the whole fucking thing. Okay. Yeah, that's Thank, good. Thank God. I'm and still going to be an angry shit the rest of the morning. never get yeah, I'm still great things, too. Angry shit the rest of the morning, <laughs> but thank God. <laughs> I'm not saying that they're all bad. No, they're not all bad. But like, what I want, I'm saying, I assume you weren't yeah, saying that. That's... What I'm getting at is like, I, I kind of got jaded on the beginnings of relationships, yeah. the first three to three months to a year, where it's like. Oh, I love you so much. You're perfect, and it's like, yeah. no, no, no one's fucking perfect. No, nah. yeah. just cut the perfect just shit out. Chemical intoxication is happening, mm-hmm. and you, you're like on fucking Molly or something right now. Yep. <laughs> you know? uh, yeah, kind of cocaine. Yeah, it's just it's not cocaine. that good. Uh, same it's, chemicals. It's not so much dopamine as much as what's the what's uh, 
Is cocaine more an endorphin thing? It's the oxytocin Ooh. thing, I think. Whatever the hell it is, it's not honest. Which would be like a Molly thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like you get the Molly the love lovey bonding thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, yeah, I've got to think of Molly where it's like you're open to everything. That's right. Yeah. Which, like, but part of me also doesn't think that's totally wrong. Because what, what we end up t- kind of getting clouded by is like things that we think matter and actually don't. Like mm-hmm. getting in a fight about what's for dinner tomorrow. But not who gives fight, a shit? Bickering. But you know what I mean? Yeah, I oh, know. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's one scale. of those things that like we put importance on things that don't matter. And when you put Molly into that same situation, nobody gives a shit. Yeah. yeah. Who cares? You know I'll I mean? eat bread. So yeah. Exactly. <laughs> which, is what, which is why that first, <laughs> bread and water, cool. <laughs> the first twelve months you knew that person and were experiencing the extra chemicals yeah. in your mind. You yeah. never argued about supper because you were too much like Oh. I started yeah. getting bitter and jaded about that. And when I would get into new relationships, I would openly say things like, yes, you think I'm perfect now, but <laughs> give it six months and you'll see I have this problem. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And but we all expected get, that of people you. People will get so annoyed. <laughs> people get annoyed at you for like fucking with their Disney magic. Yeah. Where of it's course. like, can't you just let me be happy? Well, you're ruining their high. It's like, yeah, it's true. Yeah. I'm harsh on your buzz a little bit. Yeah. But like, I and just, shitting with the door open. I couldn't do it anymore because I was just like, I, I don't want to do this anymore. This game is not fun for me anymore. But like, the, the, all that I'm saying is that if you take the uh, the long game approach, all of those things, all of those things don't matter. Mm-hmm. Which like, that's the lie that you're believing while you're in that heightened state, where it's like this person's perfect. In reality, that person probably is perfect. But all of a sudden, our our brains get into the way, and put value on things that all of a sudden build the imperfection, mm-hmm, because like mm-hmm. we we have these these sense of importance and 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 I'm I'm not saying that I'm free of it. I I do the exact same shit, but it's just like I don't give a shit. Like, does it really matter who changes the toilet paper roll? No. My problem is it's um <laughs> no. It's so just do it so she doesn't have to think about it. Because like yeah, I just, feel like it's all waste of time. Oh yeah, that's why I do it. I don't care. Oh yeah. Like as much as you enjoy those days, that bliss that comes in a new relationship, I feel like it's all just a waste of time until that starts to fall apart and you see what you're left with. Yeah, totally. Right. Like, and that's where I was getting tired of starting these projects. You wanted to see what that looks like. You wanted yeah, to see what how you really handle got? conflict. What do we really have here? Well, because like six realistically, months, are you gonna cheat on me with someone? that you get the same feeling from yeah you know what oh, i mean oh like, you just seeking that drug that high yeah, yeah like they'll be yeah. like i was with this person for six months but then i started seeing this thing and so then i found this perfect person it's like right. no 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 you've been chaining this for years so what you are expressing right now is an argument for polyamorous relationships I knew or plan. open relationships. I knew it. Yeah, so so this exact paradigm, this exact... Because this, this is a very natural process, what you're mm-hmm. describing. Yeah. So part of the argument for... Now, as much as I'm not just recommending... No, open no, I've heard everybody. your argument before. Yeah, but that's... One of, one of the benefits here is that you can have... Um, a stable long-term partner that brings you those long-term values and feelings, but you can also experience some of that new yeah, relationship yeah, I, energy as well. I feel like um, I could do what you're talking about if I wasn't conditioned to want the things. I of course, want. yeah, it's it's cultural. So like, Monogamy is a cultural yeah, experience. Yeah, it is a cult. Well, or a cultural um, value. I mean, I've heard arguments that humans are meant to be monogamous, but I don't necessarily. I've read a lot of anthropology. I, I've read both sides. I've, yeah, I've, yeah, and I've heard both sides. Where I honestly, even though I am a really serial monogamistic person Mm -hmm. and I cannot get out of my own way on that, like, I couldn't. I think that that's culturally enforced. Yeah. Right? Like, I think that if you left us in the wild, we're fucking everything. Of course. Right? Like, and that's how we were. So you're preaching to the choir here. As much as I, (laughs) as much as I, I try to practice poly for all the right moral reasons it's still kind of difficult a lot of the time because the culture all around yeah and the culture i grew up with you know in i the don't think we're going back to what you're doing if that's, certainly not like, i think i, I, think, I, I think i think a larger portion over time a larger portion of the population will experiment with it yeah and play with it but 
especially as we get more segregated and less community based in not not yes, racial segregation. Yes. Yeah, no, I know what you mean. The further um, we are from one another. Yeah, the further the at, as individuals become further and further <laughs> apart. Hey, let's clarify here. Yeah, that's yeah. Um, it's nice. not a throw, it's not a throwback to the 40s. Um, <laughs> okay, Biden. <it's>, yeah. <laughs> And I had hairy legs and kids, yeah, kids jumping ones. on my lap and corn pop was a I bad thing. I smell whoever's hair I wanted to smell. Yeah. <laughs> God, that guy's creepy. <laughs> yep. But yeah, no, I, I don't think we're going back to that, but I think that... I think our community is fractured in such a way we that so, monogamy is making a lot of sense in our in our society. We have so many problems because of monogamy, though. It's true. Like, well, like, we we the real issue in monogamy is this contractual thing. Like, the government stepped in, they put their finger on it and went, well, all right, now all of a sudden you're one person. Yeah, yeah. And we treat you as one person, and your property is one person, and your finances are one person. And it's like this whole, like, well, we stuck you together. Yeah. And it makes it difficult for people that want to be pursuant of moral, more mm -hmm. avenues mm -hmm. to, because uh, now all of a sudden that, that doesn't define where they are. You know what I mean? Like, we have the common law thing. If you live with someone for six months, you're married in the eyes of the government. Yeah. Which, like, what? Yeah, mm -hmm. well, they're like, you're not getting away from this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you're I get gonna it. You're going to be a couple. You're going to be treated like a couple, goddammit. <laughs> it's put in place <laughs> for good reason. Yeah. But it's not, it's not, uh, it's not uh, it's, open it, enough to it's help meant, with those types of situations. It's meant to protect people, but... It's a really wide brush. Mm -hmm. You know, they're taking That's a real I mean. wide That's brush, all they can yeah. do and it doesn't it, exactly. It's a which, paint roller, which is how our government is Operates. supposed to work. Yeah. It's how it's kind of how it's supposed to work right now. You can't examine every individual's circumstances on an individual basis. That level, as much as we have the manpower in our bureaucracy to do that, no, um, we don't. We we, we, we do need the, an AI. The, yeah. yeah, well, we need an algorithm, yeah. which are causing all kinds of their own problems. Yeah, let's get ready for that. Let's not go that way. Get ready for that. That'll happen. We go that way, God. and there's even less nuance than there is now. So we're on episode 37, and we still don't have our shit together. Man, we'll get this right someday. <laughs> but, um, I babbled off about monogamy versus polyamorous, all yeah. that crap, uh, which I think is a great argument. I still... I more tend towards your thinking, although I'm conditioned to be my way. The greater point I wanted to work into is my coworker has started dating a girl over the last few months who's 24 and he's 37. And wow. they've been Ugh. in the butterfly stage painful. for however long, and mm -hmm. he's never been with a girl before, really. Oh, it's an wow, online yeah. relationship, too. Oh, Have boy. they met? They haven't met yet. Oh, okay, no. So this might not exist. It might not exist. Right. Anyway, um, that's really only supplementary details. We need to bring here. them onto this podcast. Oh, I would love to get him on. <laughs> oh, I my would goodness. absolutely love to get my buddy Vince on, but oh, I don't think goodness. you'd ever get him. Like, I <sighs> think, but anyway, because uh, I talk about him all the time. Yeah, He's we'll get him in here and we'll get her video. on the iPad in He's video. It? And I can this guy is one of the most fascinating human beings I've ever met, yeah. for sure. Um, you'd never know what to look at him. Sweatpants, winter jacket, you know untamed crazy hair nice heck anime yeah. nerd heck yeah like huge guy doesn't mm -hmm. give a shit we're right fascinating i'm gonna get you guys over and this vince guy for a bonfire this summer it's gonna be great <laughs> we're gonna ha we're gonna hang out with vince anyway sounds like we're sacrificing well him. i always call him i always <laughs> okay. call him uh stinky uncle vince Okay. Right. Oh, that's funny. Like, and and that's, new people that'll come in. No wonder he's not going to come on the podcast. Get, no, no, we, he's heard we, it. He's like, I am not well I, represented on the podcast. To give it, to give it another, another wing is like, I got him Christmas gifts this year. For example, mm -hmm. we're pretty right. close. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. He thinks similarly funny things of me, right? Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, he's the one that screamed at the broken egg during lunch. Oh, right? He's yeah. a very interesting human being. So anyway, he's been having this relationship now for the last few months. And it's been all rosy, and I've been mocking him about how, yeah, yeah, wait, you talk to me a few months when you're bickering over God knows what. Mm -hmm. And that's now started to happen, where it's like their political views are nowhere near aligned. Oh. Yeah, and of course not. He's, he's a bit They're 13 outspoken. years different from each other. Yeah, he's a bit outspoken about his thoughts on things, mm -hmm. and so is she. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now they're clashing constantly. Oh. And she is in a... She's in a, a university camp, so she's very, very progressive. Mm. And he is what you would consider regressive, like conservative. 
yeah. in his outlook. Yeah. He's not far right. He's like a. Ch- his family was church going, and so he was raised in that sort of and, conservative and values. Sixty percent of the people walking around here have some pretty classic conservative values. This this so, is this is Alberta. Welcome to the job. I had to tell him. I'm like, look, I totally get it. And some of what she's saying, I don't agree with. And I've never agreed with everything you're saying either. Yeah. But what you need to understand is you're going to have this problem no matter what girl you're with. Mm-hmm. Because uh-huh. you're aging out. Yeah. Like your, your mentality and your thoughts on things. Mm-hmm. Whether I like them, find them funny, charming, whatever. You need to understand that they're aging out. Mm-hmm. Like your mindset is old schooly. Mm-hmm. Her mindset is more in line with the values of today yeah so if you guys get into an argument and you take it to the broader consensus she's right you're wrong she's gonna win yeah and like that doesn't that has no bearing on what i think Mm because i think he's right about a lot of it Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but like globally like socially she's right yeah you need to understand that you're gonna have these problems with anyone else so like they can't be problems between you two. They they're problems with you and the greater world at yeah. that point, right? Anyone else you meet is gonna have these same problems. You're kind you. of explaining to him that regardless of who she is, he has to come to a method of communicating with the other side of the political spectrum yeah. efficiently. Mm-hmm. And the other part is is like you need to decide whether these are issues worth mattering. Like that's to you. right. Like. I said to him just yesterday, I was like, I had these same problems with every woman I've been with, but in different ways. Mm-hmm. Like, you'll find little things that could irk you about any human being. Of course. What What's maturing in a relationship is when you go, yeah, it doesn't really bother me that much, though. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, I yeah. can probably just let that go. Yeah. Do I want this relationship to fall apart over the clothes we wear? That's right. Right? Like, like I, I think that, for example... When I got with Sarah, she in this had case, a lot the, clo- of, the clothes you wear (quotation marks) could if, actually be metaphorical for the values that you communicate and show on your outside, right? Yeah. Well, when I started dating Sarah, she and I couldn't have been more opposite on some things, and to look at us, that wouldn't have seemed so because mm-hmm. we looked like a fairly good match. Um, mm-hmm. But like, she was big into branding, still is. Right. Like. She has to know the clothing names, like the, the, the brand she's wearing. She likes only one type of metal, right? Mm-hmm. Black metal. She's a Satanist. She's straight edge. She has all these labels. Yeah. Isn't it yep. weird that she's Satanist and straight edge? Not really. Cause not. You sure? The, the two Sa- coincide and Sa- often do. Satanist is not about rebellion. No. Satanist is about you. Yeah, yeah, it's all about empowering yeah, you. Being a Satanist is a personal empowerment movement. Yeah. No, I know. Just and, and like not, straight and, edge had its origins in but, Christianity. Yeah, yeah, it did. But it there's did, also Christian but black not, metal. Not giving <laughs> your so not giving a substance control over your person is still a Satanist yeah, value. Sarah used to tell me that right, I yeah. was a Satanist. I just don't know it because <laughs> well, of the way I am, uh-huh, the way uh-huh. that I create, and the way that I'm like all about inner will and like um, making yourself whatever you want and overcoming all and and not doing what other people do all of those are satanic principles man i have an argument of i think everybody technically is i think we just use these structures to facilitate our own personal worldviews but like people think of satanism as like red horns and pitchforks yeah i know (laughs) right that's a problem of language but just in terms of the individual like i see a lot of people that use um religious structures to ju- uh, to justify their own individual way of wanting to make be yep. mm-hmm. you know what I mean like it, it's not necessarily about the philosophy or about the whatever it's just like I want to be this way and I'm using this to facilitate oh that's it. exactly it I was just saying about image mm-hmm. like it was all branding and I need this brand and I need this image and if I don't then I'm nothing mm-hmm. to some extent like yep. I don't have a value a country mm-hmm. oh, right? right yeah There's no yeah. patriotism no, no, no tribe I'm perfectly fine with having no tribe and in fact at well, my, my, my tribe is he, is humans not a particular sp- yeah and especially rubbing against someone that's so into branding right like when you put me next to someone who's so into branding yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like it's irritating like a scab mm-hmm, on me where it's mm-hmm. like why do you need branding of any kind can't you just be a human being but then after a while you you so in these situations, you got to like hunt for that high road. So it's clear that what you've done is 
stand back, analyze the situation, yeah. and go, oh, so these are where her values are. She's not forcing those values on no. me. Nope. So what I can do is I don't need to turn a blind eye. I don't need to ignore it, but I can acknowledge that this is where her values lie. Yeah. And sure, she's probably going to talk about it endlessly, and you're going to not give a fuck. Um, but well, you, you can acknowledge that this is not a hill worth having a battle on because it's just a personal value of hers and she's not pushing it on you well so it would therefore, be little things would set me over like we're yeah be like i'd be listening to like metal or something and then she puts some on and it was always the same thing it was always black metal the same six bands and it's like yeah but there's other metal mm-hmm. but this one's the cool one right this is the label that she likes mm-hmm. it's like but I can like black because I like some black metal too. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying anything, but I like black metal a lot. But like I like other types of metal too mm-hmm. that border that because I just like metal, right? Mm-hmm. And I've been all over that roadmap to try and get a broad palette of what's out there. Mm-hmm. When you just limit yourself to, I like black metal. It's like, but other things sound similar but are different. So mm-hmm. why not try those? So like, it just throw- really irked me. It was like, there's a greater world out there. Well, but I think to, like there's... Oh, hold on, before we go on Why do you need here, rules? I want to put so on the other rules. end of the spectrum here. One time I started seeing this Ukrainian chick here in Lethbridge, just, just for a very short period of time, because there was some obvious incongruities. What were you doing for uh, work at that point? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just... <sighs> I had to. <laughs> Second year electrical, Midland Electric. Oh. Yeah, I was back. Nothing I, new. Back on the road. The normal, Boring. Normal stuff. Boring. Boring. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Working for Midland Electric in the rendering plant north of town where they literally tear the skin off of cows that died in the field talking. who knows how long ago. So the stench was wild. Mm. You got stomach, you got uh, heartburn from all this cow stomach acid just floating around in the air. So, there, now we covered that. Um, <laughs> Sweet, man. Nice backstory. Yeah. Right? Got now em. you set Love the tone. Em. So we took a road trip to Calgary, which is only a two-hour drive. And early in the drive, I was like, so what kind of music uh, do you listen to? She's like, oh, uh, Rihanna. Ooh. Oh, man, that's annoying. That's, that's it? That's I'm like, annoying. oh, not, not, a, not a genre? People don't just, like music. Just one artist? Just Rihanna. Oh, she speaks oh, cool. to me. So anyway, that, that oh. didn't go very far. Well, I'll tell you, it has always rubbed me the wrong way when I'll ask someone, like, what kind of music they like. And uh, fortunately, I haven't done this in a while, but, like... When they have no real answer. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, you know, really what, what's music. ever on the radio? Oh, everything. No, nowadays. What? Nowadays, everyone. Because I ask this every single day. Every day I ask, what kind of music are you into? And I, I get more specific. What's, what's one of your top five bands? What, what genre do you normally throw on when you're driving alone in the car? Like, I ask very specific questions. And I get the same answer nine out of ten times, which is, oh, I listen to mostly everything except for maybe this one little subgenre. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, which like is cool. That's a good attitude. The I listen to everything is a great attitude, but I'm really trying to get them to share their preferences with me yeah. so I can expose myself to new bands. No, it's, it's kind of like a learning experience for the two of you, right? That's right. Where but, have you been? Where's my musical roadmap? But nowadays, all the time, I get that same answer, and then I'll I'll push a little further to try to get them to give me something to listen to besides stuff I already know. Well, I went and on it's a quite huge difficult. musical journey, like in like 2011 to 20. I'm doing one right now. I'm exposing myself to like, rap. All I was listening to for a long, long time was like European metal, like folk metal, uh, symphonic metal, black metal, doom metal. Are you a refused guy? Uh, no, oh, no, no. That's but, too bad. But, Way too funky. For Sarah, Sarah <laughs> likes that stuff. Okay, good. Sarah's more into punk and hardcore, and yeah, I think it's because like people have a reticence to show who they are. Like we we have this like attachment to music when we're in our twenties or whatever. Like nothing really gets better for us than when we're in that nostalgia. Of course, area. I the mu- the music that I listen to in my twenties still is the stuff that gets me the most pumped. But I think like people have an aversion to exposing who they are two people well, yeah. yeah so i think it's like if they're they're no matter what it is they're worried that it's going to be viewed as negatively and therefore they're going to be yeah viewed for, as for this 22 year old that i was tattooing yesterday to say oh yeah well this is one michael buble song i like you oh, know that's yeah. never going to come out for him it's to just, say right i mean maybe 
Maybe. Like I, I felt like in 2011 to 2014, my whole world was opening up in a lot of new ways. And then I started listening to like I went through and listened to all the Pink Floyd because I always thought yeah. Pink Floyd had a couple cool songs, and I never really heard their whole albums. So I was like, I want to go and listen to all of Pink Floyd. And then from there, it was like, okay, now I'm going to go listen to Radiohead. Then I'm going to go listen to say city in color and, and it's I'm not necessarily to pump to you up it's not necessarily because that's what you're craving right now no, it's because you like, want that experience well i want to listen to different stuff and then yeah. i got really heavily into indie and then psycho mm -hmm. billy followed from there wicked and i got really into like all kinds of experimental genres mm -hmm. and like then i got really into just ambient noise for a while <laughs> Like, I went on okay. all kinds, and then really old classical rock, like <laughs> listen, Bob Seger and stuff. I listened to whale noise for a month. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I can just speak it whale. went in all kinds of different directions, and when I came out the other side of that, I like Do you know what a peacock sounds like? Because Remy does. <laughs> well, that's something, like, when I was teaching guitar, I used to uh, kind of <laughs> make, make kids learn that stuff, because, like, guitar especially, I, I find it important to understand your origin. Right? Yeah. So... If they would tell me, oh, Trace I love... Trace it back to the earliest yeah. point. Kind of so it would be like, oh, I really like this band. And then I go, well, you know, that band was actually influenced by yeah. this band. Mm -hmm. You should check them out. And then you should check out whoever influenced them, yep. whoever influenced them. And it would always come back to, especially if you're in the punk rock things, it would come back to eventually I would teach them about Robert Johnson mm -hmm. and Origin of the Blues and those kinds of things. Ugh. And it was one of those things that like, you. then all of a sudden you can hear just like I think for people like the similarity you need to be able to understand similarity mm -hmm. and inspiration and the continuing on of through lines like there is there is Robert Johnson in black metal and, yeah yeah and yeah you need there's to know like that. that in every genre you know what I mean yeah. like that you need to know that there's this piece that travels on and I, I I feel like we don't value that right now weirdly enough but I think it would be important for us to understand even just like in terms of concepts or technology or whatever it is, like we, we should understand the through line that happens. You know what I mean? Like if you're holding an iPhone 12, you should understand what the iPhone was. You should understand yeah, what should those 80s bricks were. we should be able to reverse engineer way better than we can. Ooh. Like or just uh, reverse understand. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I think like we... See it in motion, how you got from point A to point B. Yeah. But for me, going it's, back... It's embarrassing how many people don't understand the concept of reverse engineering, even the most basic things in their life. Mm -hmm. Where, like, I have... I have oh, I've reverse engineered my own psychology so I, many times. Or even the simple things, like... How I do I get to this point? I have no fear to say, ah, this isn't working right, and I'll just fuck, fuck with it and take it apart, mess with some stuff. Yeah. There, most people in our, in our society would be scared to take apart that paper towel holder. To oh, try yeah. to to try to fix it, mm -hmm. right? When it's like, no, it's it's literally going to be a couple of spinny things and a couple of long pokey things, and it fits together. That's it. This is another thing I was talking about the other day at work. Was like, um, our capacity to learn new things increases as we learn new things. Yep. So like, because yep. you've taken apart much bigger things than that, that seems easy. But mm -hmm. if you've never even done that much, right. Then yeah, that exactly. seems impossible. If you if you've never tighten that handle on that pot yeah you you're not gonna it doesn't matter how easy you, it is you, if you've never done it yeah before. if you've never had that handle on that pot you just have a wobbly pot handle you're not about to take apart the microwave and see where the light stopped working but i also think it's because we societally have uh if it's broken throw it away yep. mentality right like, Which is exactly what I'm nodding at. For yeah, sure. disposable humanity. Yeah, right? like for the longest time, like for the f this is the first time I've ever done it, but I'm getting my boots resold. Great, awesome. I didn't know that was still doable. Yeah, I knew yeah, that yeah. was a thing back in the day. I didn't know cobblers still existed. <laughs> they do. There's one just over here, I think. Oh uh, no, he doesn't take on boots anymore. No, he does saddles. He's getting pretty old. He's guy. very old. Hey, most <laughs> most 28 year olds right now dress like cobblers anyway. Yeah, that's so it's hard point. to tell who's who. Everybody seems Does he like a still cobbler. dress up like a cowboy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I've been in there a few times for like straps for leather jackets and stuff. Yep. And he's he's yeah he used to cobble shoes and stuff in there. Mm -hmm. I don't. Well, know. he'll still do boots for preferred clients, but he's not going to take on hippie yeah. boots. Joe blow off the. Road. If it's a cowboy boot, he'll probably do it. Mm. Yeah. For a cowboy, you know what I mean. But he's, cowboys don't exist. The amount anymore. of hipsters that are around here with so boots. So you go now. in with a cowboy hat. He tells you to hit the road. Probably. <laughs> you probably exactly. smell it on you. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> You're wearing deodorant. 
Get out of yeah, here. Get out of here. <laughs> you Yankee. You don't smell like horse shit. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's just like, I don't know. I, I think that, you, that we've got this fear of um, broken meaning broken. Like broken meaning gone. Yep. Like yep. it's, and not to mention, if I do take it apart, maybe I'll break it to a point that it's not usable. It's the disposable battery generation. Yeah. We're we're all part of that generation where like, well, throw yeah. some more AA and batteries. This leads right back into my point about relationships is people do that with people too. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. we we find a problem and it's like, well, fuck you, I'm out of here. Yeah. That's right. You can go hit bricks. I'm so go and find someone better. So I've got good luck I've got with a that. fun personal journey on this one. Is that. You know, I've, I've been through a few relationships before. I've never really hunted for relationships. So I've always felt the that when I... game. I've always felt that when I, like, I ended a relationship... It's the VIPs. <laughs> I've always felt that when I ended a relationship, I was like, did I just find an excuse at the end? Did I let that fall apart because I wasn't committed enough to finding something like that? You're looking like for that? an exit route. Yeah, or it was, like, was, I, was I looking for an exit? But currently, I've got a partner that actually kind of makes sense for me we actually kind of have some shared values and as far as our daily function goes we actually get along just great and i and it's fun to look back in those times where i felt that pang of insecurity where i was thinking man like did i just look for an exit because i wanted change and look for an exit because i wasn't satisfied or wasn't happy could be looking but, for a way to continue scott's adventure right? well yes and and those things to a small amount are always true are, are totally true but now that I've actually stumbled into someone that, oh, you, this just works, turns out those other girls, I just had shit luck, and they were all kind of nuts. Well, when you're and they young. Su- and, they, and I'm super glad that I didn't stick it out with any of them for a minute longer than when I did. When you're young. Like, I'm super glad. It's like you find surface things that connect you. And like you, you don't like know yourself music. well enough to know what you want. Exactly. You, you can fall in love with someone because they have this incredible energy, this incredible life experience, this incredible et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But end up your daily interaction methods, your the type of mood flows that the two of you have, just don't line up. Yeah, no, what and, I've found, and that's a good enough reason to say, I gotta I gotta keep moving. What I found really good is like when you've been in a relationship for a year or more or so and uh, you can sit with a person and have no no focus on one another yep. at all and it's silent between the two of you but it's not awkward yeah right it's an understood that's silence super important where you are both doing your own thing but neither person is insecure yeah right because like there's some relationships where that's not possible I'm I'm a gleaming, <laughs> gleaming example of that like Ke- Kevin sees me through a wide array of moods and busy versus slack time, et cetera. Kevin's seen a lot, a lot of me, and he's at sometimes too much. I'll, I'll, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Lots. It's too yeah. much. <laughs> there are times Kevin's fucking sick of me, uh, and th- there are times I don't need to talk for hours at a time. And yeah. there are times where I'll talk your fucking face off. Oh, right? I can be that way and, too. And we'll, all of us have that. Yeah. And our relationship needs to be able to endure all of those flows of a typical human's personality. Yep. Mm-hmm. Where in the beginning window, all you have is, I just can't wait to see my person. Yeah, I can't yeah. wait. All the time I see them, I'm just so happy. Well, I think like there's a, there's a, probably a maturity thing too, mm-hmm. that like as you get older, you start to see that everybody is the same in many, in many ways. Yep. And they all have their own things. And they're all going to do their own things. And you can only do your things. Mm. Yeah. Like, if if Scott's having a rough day or whatever, and Scott's going through all the Scott stuff, Scott's got to deal with it. Mm-hmm. All I can do is be like, oh, man, Scott's, Scott's doing some stuff today. Yeah. And it's like that for any relationship that you have. But the more that we force people to kind of only be within the box that we want them to, which I think is like an immature relationship, the idea that we have to conform the world around us mm-hmm. rather than we have to understand that the world is happening whether yeah. we're here or not um i think that also plays into it where it's like we have this inability to see um others as them themselves 
and we mm-hmm. want them to fit within whatever window. Like that's why the idea of like, oh, I'm looking for my person. Mm-hmm. What are you talking about? What does that mean? <laughs> that, Everyone's a person. Your person is a complex human being with yeah. as much going on as you have. That's yeah. just a slightly yeah. less mention. slightly less crazy way of saying the one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. And it's failing to understand that that person could be involved in a car accident, have a traumatic brain injury, and be a totally different person <laughs> because of that. Yeah. yeah. Immediately. And we don't have the same respect for this kind of chaoticness that's around us as we're younger. When we're younger, it all feels like it's pure it's ego. It's us. Yeah. yeah. Everything means something. And it has to be within what we understand it to be. Mm-hmm. And anything that's outside of that just doesn't make sense and therefore shouldn't be. Well, I've always thought of it as like an extension of like when you own a dog. Like, I have a dog. This is my dog. Mm-hmm. This is my good boy. He, he comes and snuggles the, when I want him the, to. The dog eats when I decide he yeah, eats. I he eat has him. the values I prescribe him. I give him water. If I don't feed him and give him water, he might die. Right? Yeah. It's dependent on me, and therefore it needs to do what I want. Right? If you boil it down, that's what you've got when you own a pet. Yeah. You have a pet. It's and, like and then, that. And then there's certain parallels to a child. Yeah. From, um, mm-hmm. to the, from the ages to one, one to eight. This thing might Extreme not dependency. might eat the wrong thing. Mm-hmm. It but how might much not importance we get from these things yeah. can't be measured. Or it's yeah. like we apply that same principle in relationships. I think too. It's poison. It's it's not coming from a place of love for that person. It's mm-hmm. coming from a place of need yep. of that person. Yeah. Not even they need you. You need them to right? need you <laughs> to need you. Which right? is a weird need messed is up a really insecurity. Insecure desire well at the same yep. time you could view it that way <clears throat> but there's also the viewpoint of that could be something that your personality enjoys well here's, but here's well the, not necessarily let's, codependency let's delineate that we don't we don't need to be needed yes we do we we need to be wanted. We need to be valued. Va- va- that's if, what I mean. If, if we value is an important thing, yes, right? but, but that's lot, why we have nurses. A lot of people like nurses hunger, have to put up with so much shit. A lot of people look for that value in the wrong place, yes. and they look for a partner that needs them. Um, not not to paint with a wide brush again, but my brother does this. Mm-hmm. My brother's had he's had three really three serious relationships in his life, and he's always found women that need Are him in on him. all the wrong ways. I did this ways. too. I did this too. Yeah. My first three big relationships were with mm-hmm. women that didn't work for and, one reason or another. Yeah. And and they drag him to the bottom of the ocean like a millstone around his neck. I'm just saying there's mi- there there's, yeah. <laughs> there's yeah. use like there's use of something and misuse of something. Exactly. What you're describing is misuse and I'm saying that there is a use fun- function of it too. Well as you can which tell yourself like, better to oh, sorry, under, go on. I was just saying, like, to you wanting to be able to provide and have connection and things like that. That's yep. not necessarily a negative. But if you're in a mental state that's not going to allow you to use it in a, a beneficial way, you're mm-hmm. going to misuse it. Mm-hmm. And then it's going to go into this codependency negativity thing, which I totally understand. Um, I'm, I'm just saying that, like, it's not the thing that is the negative. It's us, how we use like it anything. and interact mm-hmm. with, right? Tools are the tools. Exactly. And, and that's they- the same with people. Like... You interacting with one of those earlier relationships right mm-hmm. now, very different human than w- when you would have interacted with them then. Oh, absolutely, and yeah. They are too. Yeah, and it's one of those like we have to understand that like it might have been just X Y Z, or it might be this person's not right for me, or it's just the time wasn't right, the or timing. my brain yeah, wasn't right, thing. or whoever knows. Sometimes what fucks you isn't the fact that you have no chemistry so you've got bad timing yeah that's that right person oh no all of these individuals i had gr- we had great chemistry yeah we just weren't doing and and there was We're there was some different there was some more long-term life. personality things so i'm still in touch with all of these women um and there's still just some personality things where i can still talk to them today and be like oh yeah we're just just not, just not meeting in the middle just not that's meeting okay up. Of course it is. You know is. what I mean? That's Absolutely. The, that's the brilliant part of it is just like, oh, yeah, no, that's just, it, it would be, in terms of what I value Although, and what I want yeah. to experience, that would be in, I, in Congress. Personal or, preference. I do or feel like, in, 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 and a little bit of contrast to that, there are people out there that you'll have chemistry with forever, yep. but you'll never line up with. Mm-hmm. Yep. Like, it'll never work. There's, and like there's you one could, particular you could have relationship great like that. months with this person. Yep. But you could never live great with this person. Yep. 
Like no yep. matter how many times you try it. Been there, done that, man. It's just never going to meet up. Yep. You're always going to be, oh, yep. I was down here and you were up here and now I'm up here and you're down here and we can oh, never meet. Oh, yeah. And we're not allowed to meet. Maybe it's too good. Maybe it's too good and too bad to be, to live with. Maybe it's just here to instruct me for what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. Maybe it's just a teaching moment, right? Well, everything's a teaching moment as long like, as maybe I can learn a lot. It can be, yeah. Because there's some people that are, you just can't get the timing with. Mm-hmm. It's like no matter how many times we knock this thing back and forth, we're just never meeting. Yeah. And maybe we should just fuck off. Yeah. <laughs> Stop wasting each other's time. That's, That's it. Truth. Yep. So, no, I've, I've, uh, yeah, I've, tur- I've turned away from a few relationships where like I've. I've felt very real love. I felt very, very real connection. But at the end of the day, you know what? This this isn't how I'm gonna spend my life. This isn't this isn't my plan. This is a distraction. Yeah. We're yeah. just we're just masturbating. Or right? well no, like we, we did the things if this is all fully real, but I gotta go. This 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 isn't whole. This isn't this isn't the full experience. Mm. What is the full experience for you? Man, and then I'm gonna ask you, because <laughs> that's a great, great thing you just brought up. Yeah, fair. the The full experience, as in the full experience, I guess we have to define that first. If we're gonna take this to a scientific place where we're actually gonna set a goalpost and then work through that, uh, the whole experience in in this circumstance would have to be. Uh, a, what are you looking for? And for so long, I wasn't looking for anything serious to tie me down. And to a certain degree, I'm still not looking for that. Mm-hmm. I may have stumbled into something like that. That's that's life. I'm, o- I'm open to change. But the whole experience needs to be someone that makes your life better, not worse. And gives you that full spectrum of emotion and feeling that you want from that slice of the pie which is the romantic portion of your life Mm. right that that full spectrum of of feeling and experience while not dragging you down emotionally i found that so much in the past is that i felt as though as being drugged down emotionally or intellectually you know there's one relationship i passed where i wasn't drugged down emotionally i was actually quite free emotionally and felt quite whole and myself but she wasn't at all intellectually stimulating for me Mm. so there it wasn't so much as something was lacking or something was bad or sorry it wasn't something was bad and saying no but it was that something was missing here Mm -hmm. you know that fire is just not lit well, the, the fire was lit. No. The, 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 oh. the, fi- <laughs> the, the fire was lit. The fire was lit. Okay, never mind. But as far as my day-to-day experience, yeah. intellectually, could I bring this person the more complex thoughts within myself? No. They simply would not understand. Right. Their, their world was much simpler than mine, and that was how it was going to stay. Intrinsically, proprietarily, at their root, their world is simpler than mine just not gonna fly Mm -hmm. Um, and that relationship I actually considered like could this work in the long term and at the end of the day the answer was like nah you know what this this is great this is very wholesome it's brought me a lot of happiness it's brought me a lot of fulfillment but I'm not intellectually stimulated enough I cannot I can behave as my full self but I can't communicate my full self because this person will never understand the way I function Fair. What's your uh, full experience? Um, I what mean, it does cha- it for you? I think depending on like what time of my life you've seen me at, it would change. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's probably what it is. Like, I want someone that is open to changing together and separately, and. Um, figuring out well not figuring out because i don't think we ever really figure it out but it's like someone to walk with Mm -hmm. like i can't i can't make you take steps and you can't make me take steps we're on a walk it is what it is we're gonna walk our own path technically yeah um but i just want someone that allows me to walk and i allow them to walk 
and um, change and grow and experience life together. That that's my ideal right now, hmm. and that's like I don't uh, like before it would have been like the quintessential stuff. Like I want a house, want a three kids and a dog and white picket fence and all these. <laughs> Not all that these. you don't still want those. No, I, and but I my view on what those things that I want are very different now. Mm-hmm. You know, it used to be like I had to have a a house like this and a thing like this and it was all these like weird and then it, now all of a sudden as I got allowed myself to grow and change it's like well do you really want that no it's less binary yeah well yeah. it's it's just mm-hmm. more more about what I actually would want rather than what I feel like was pushed on me to want yeah the the Disney magic yeah, the, yeah. and that's that's in a lot of ways yeah you know what I mean like I, I'm just I'm kind of figuring out what I actually want and pursuing that because when when you look down the road of like oh well 50 more years 60 more years with technology maybe a hundred more years like that's a long ass time and I want to be able to be pursuing it the way that I would w- want to pursue it and that goes for and I would want that for her too yeah you know what I mean like find things that actually bring you joy and enjoyment and experience and the hard things the good things that like all of it all of the life all of the life <laughs> i like that yeah for me it would be i think i've been enough i've been in enough relationships where i had to sacrifice myself for the other person not just had to but probably wanted to yeah right yeah, absolutely. i was a willing participant in giving up my own things again mi- mistaking need yeah for value and and um all of my probably all of my worth coming from the reaction to my efforts that way Mm -hmm. um what i've learned through that coming out the other end of that is i really want to have my own things always now like i don't want to have to sacrifice any part of what i want to do i don't want to have to debate about um what i want to do like if i if i want to do something that's just for me that won't hurt anyone else i don't want that to have to be um, something that someone else gets a say in, I want them to be happy for me to do that. Mm-hmm. Like if I want to change something about myself for my own betterment, I want encouragement, not um, do you think that's a good idea? Yeah. yeah. Like, you know what I mean? I want that freedom to grow. Yeah. Right? And likewise, like I want to push that person to pursue their mutual, yeah. their self goals, right? Mm. Self has become a huge part of any relationship I'm in now. Uh, which is strange because you wouldn't expect that the the primary thing would be the ability to be a better you mm-hmm. through getting a partner. But but turns out one of the most important things in any partnership is them valuing you as a whole person, yeah. as yourself, and they you're helping them on their journey. They're helping you in yeah. your journey. Mm-hmm. That's an actual partnership. It's like. Early on, I think that when I would look at relationships, it would be like, I'm at this person, and then I stopped living my story and started being We're becoming one, and then that is our journey. Yeah. Not the two of you on your journey assisting each other. There's a line here, but we're holding each other's hands through the line. Yeah, Yeah, tight. We're walking two, two different journeys. Say, you're walking through the woods, I'm walking through a desert, but we're holding hands. This is my way of seeing... We both have a different story, yeah. but we're experiencing it together. Yep. Whereas before what I was doing was we're walking one story, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm desperately trying to be a part of yours because mm. I don't want to deal with mine. So one of my one of my close one of my really close friends actually, he and his wife were married or were, have been together since they were seventeen. Uh, and they're they're twenty seven now. They're, you know, obviously super close. And for the longest time, he'd come out on a, like a boys' weekend, and he'd do a little bit of mushrooms, super secret, like. And then wherever we're we're like having a big party, hang out at their house. There was no mushrooms. So I'm like, okay, what's going on? Turns out he wasn't allowed to experiment with stuff, or he still isn't allowed to experiment with, with things that she isn't comfortable with. See, that's so now, terrible. That yeah, that's super toxic. Yeah. So she finally, and then this has been the last year where she's finally become comfortable with the mushrooms a bit because she tried them. Finally, he convinced her to try them. They had a lot of fights about this. 
she finally tried them and was like, oh, in small doses, this is not a big deal. And now he's got carte blanche on that. But as far as experimenting with any other things, and, and drugs are just an example. This obviously applies yeah, to yeah. other parts of the relationship. Well, it would. It would have but, to. But drugs are, a super, <laughs> drugs are a super good example, especially mushrooms where this is a very personal experience you're about to have. Mm -hmm. But because she wasn't comfortable with it and doesn't understand it, he was just like, not allowed and that and would color that experience too for him yeah like, I'm doing something bad I'm gonna of get in trouble of course but it's so weird to and now I had it as we, recently as two weeks ago I sat in the living room after a big party night where he myself and one of our one of our friends had stayed up until six in the morning eating mushrooms drinking whiskey just shooting this shit yeah um, and the next day we're having a talk about that and we got into the drug conversation because it's very relevant very recent and and for them, it's just a normal part of the relationship that she needs to be comfortable with an experience and her having or them having those reins over each other's personal choices and personal action is just an accepted part of the relationship and something that they kind of just need to work around. Mm. And now, from my perspective, that's wildly toxic and unhealthy. Yeah, it doesn't sound good to me. No. But that's just how their relationship works the, with the cultures they were raised with, with... I don't know. That's just how that works for them. I mean, I'm not saying that that can't work. What I'm, what I would say is that um, a lot of times people get together young and then they stay together and then they're afraid of what else is outside of that. Exactly. They like, they've been used to changing and growing together. And I'm not saying I wouldn't now, be scared if I were them. Oh yeah. It's scary outside. Of course. There's wolves outside. You know, you might get eaten. But when you've been <laughs> together at that young age, yeah, your personal freedoms your personal oh what's the right word your personal sovereignty is connected to that person yeah you know you're not two people helping each other along two people holding hands through that invisible line right. everything you're, you have is tied together you're you're one person now and how do you this how is, do you make how do you make new ground how do you discover new things except through your partner as a final point before we we call this one. Mm -hmm. I, I think I got to a point where I had four years long relationships that I seen myself surviving at the end mm -hmm. and having multiple options of mm -hmm. partners after every mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. I started getting to a point where the end didn't hurt as much anymore. Right. And I stopped dreading it as much anymore. Mm -hmm. And it stopped scaring me as much and even got to the point where you feel a little invincible. Yeah. yeah. Where it's like, yeah, what's the harm in one more train wreck? I've been through so many. And yeah. you just get yeah. callous to the possibility of having to rebuild. Like, whereas with that situation, you've never rebuilt and you don't know how to. This just happened with uh, Dave a few years ago, my brother. Oh, yeah. Where it's like, how do I possibly put the pieces back together? I've been mm -hmm. with my partner for my whole adult life yep and now i'm in my 30s mid 30s what's left for me to do the answer is spend a decade single fucking traveling the world well, i i told your him life that out. i'm like He's gotta you're going. gonna go up Ooh. and down you're gonna you're gonna have toxic swings you're gonna be with a woman for mm -hmm. a little while it's gonna be great then it's gonna be terrible then yep. you're gonna do one night stands like it's gonna be drinking binges it's gonna be all kinds of crazy growth but you'll be doing it all for the first time in your 30s, right? Yeah. <laughs> Whereas a lot of people do that. When they're, they're younger. Younger. When they're 19. Yeah. So I don't know how it ends for him, but I hope it. I hope he figures it out. I'll find his way. <laughs> yeah. Well, good job, boys.